What's good guys, we're back at it again with another video. And this video is gonna be a little bit of a story time, while at the same time, it's also gonna be okay, how can you do this? How can this happen for you? You know, we're gonna be talking about how can I get off the bench? How can I get more playing time? How can I stop playing 20, 20 minutes, right? So 20, 20 minutes, you only get it when you're up 20 or when you're down 20. I made a couple videos, you know, here and there, just talking about, okay, how can I make a team? Or how just talking about embracing your role, things like that, but never like the adversity that I went through in high school and then in college and how did I end up getting on the court even when I had seniors in front of me I get DMs messages from you guys all the time oh I got this senior in front of me you know and I feel like coach is only playing him because he's older or there's this other player I don't know why coach is playing him I'm better than him like I'm doing this this and that but I'm still not getting on the court so I just really wanted to come to you guys with a video you know really explaining what I did to end up you know getting through that adversity and getting on the court, right? So let's just jump into the high school side of it. So first, we got to be real. You know, I've always been taller than mostly than everybody else. So and with taller basketball players, we all know you're going to play mo more times than not, right? Around eight, seven, no, seven or eight years old, you start getting the, oh, you, you're tall. You play basketball. At the time, I didn't. I heard it enough. I ended up playing. Obviously, I'm starting from the jump because I'm just taller than every other kid, right? But the second I get to high school, Right, I get to high school, you know, I'm, I'm starting on, fre on the freshman team, of course, because I'm still taller than the rest of the freshmen. I'm playing JV. I think I started JV at some point, too, right? So I'm not used to much adversity in terms of playing time. I'm used to playing. Like, I'm used to it. You know, it's whatever. Like, I'm going to, like, I'm, I'm, I'll go to every game thinking I'm going to start. So my sophomore year comes around, and because I just, I was getting triple doubles on my on freshman team, I'm playing well on JV. Sophomore year come, I'm thinking, okay. I got a pretty big role coming. Like, okay, I, even though I'm a sophomore, I'm probably going to be a starter. Next thing you know, I get a mess from my teammate. Bro, you know we're getting a transfer. 6'7", senior. 6'7", he's going into his senior year, transferring to our high school, Cal. You see, I got the gear on. Transferring into Cal for his senior year. And all of a sudden, my teammates are like, oh, yeah, he's 6'7". He dunking. He this, this, and that. It's my sophomore year. I'm probably about 6'5". So they're like, oh, no, he's 6'7". He this, this, and that. Oh, yeah, he's taking your spot. He's starting. He... Da, 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 da. I'm like, man, I'm not worried about dude. Like, man, I've never heard of him. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Because I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I'm set. Like, I'm set. Season come around. Season come around. He beats me for the spot off the rip. Like, he beats me for the spot. You know, I I, you know, I kind of always meant to talk to sellers about, what were you, you know what I'm saying? Why was he, you know? But he beat me for the spot. Not to mention there was another senior. He was about 6'4". I definitely felt like I was better than him. You know, by far, he was just more of an athlete. You know, he also made the team as well. But at the time, I was like, all right, I just got to worry about the dude in front of me, the six seven dude, right? Season starts. I'm getting in here and there, you know what I'm saying? And then I'll never forget this. We're playing St. Pius. If you're in Georgia, you know where that is. We're playing St. Pius, at St. Pius. I'm sitting on the bench. I haven't gotten in the game yet. The kid that was in front of me ends up getting hurt or something, right? Foul trouble or something. It was something happened. He had to come out the game. Shout out Sellers. I appreciate him for doing this now. He, this man, walked down the bench. I'll never forget this. Walked down the bench, looked me in my eyes like this. Looked me in my eyes like this. And then looked at the other 6'4 kid and said, go get in. And that was the first time, I want to say, in my career that that had ever happened to me, that a coach, like, challenged me. I felt like it was challenging me, or really I felt like it was trying to embarrass me. Like, like why are you not putting me in? You know, and at the time, I, I feel like I don't ever do this, but I, you know, I pouted. I'm, why am I not getting in? I'm, I'm acting like I'm not watching the game anymore. Like, what? Like, what's wrong? Like, why am I not getting in the game? But here's what I did, though. Instead of, of course, I pouted in that moment, but from that point on, here was my mindset. Okay, you don't want to play me. You don't want to do this, this, and that. Here's how I'm going to approach practice. This is what I have to say to you. Say to you guys, this is what you need to do. I approach practice like this. I don't care who's in the gym. I don't care if it's an assistant coach. I don't care if it's a manager. I don't care if it's a teammate that's on the sideline while we're scrimmaging, you know what I'm saying? Waiting to get subbed in. My, every time I come into practice, I'm trying to make, you know, our head coach and everybody else in the gym think, why am I not playing this kid? Because he's embarrassing the dude that's in front of him. And I really wanted to do that every single day in practice because he really, you know, it really kind of pissed me off because I'm like, what? Like, why are you not playing me? Granted, I shout out to Coach Sellers. I really appreciate him for it because I just didn't have that intensity. I didn't have that aggressiveness. I just didn't. I was acting like it was just given to me, like I'm supposed to be playing. I wasn't dunking. I was this, this, and that. I was playing soft, right? So I appreciate him for that because the second he did that, all of a sudden, 
switch flipped in my head. All of a sudden, I'm aggressive on the court. Next thing you know, by the end of the year, I end up starting, which is why I say to you guys, you got to eat. I don't care if you're not playing, you're not getting in this, this, and that. You got to approach practice every day. If your coach does not want to play you, you have to do things in practice that literally he has no choice but to throw you on that court. He has no choice. You're beating everybody else. Everybody else at your position in practice. You dominate a practice. A coach has to put you in. Has to put you in, right? I have another example. This is a better example. Let's transition into college. So obviously, I kind of knew when I got to college, you know, said this before, our whole, basically a lot of our team was high major transfers. We had an NBA player on the roster. We we're already, they went to the NCAA tournament the year before. I think we're projected number one in the, uh, in the conference, everything, right? So I'm not expecting as a freshman to really come in and play a lot, a lot of minutes. I'm not expecting that. But at the same time, I wasn't expecting to get DMPs. My first college game, my parents came down, flew, flew, flew down to Florida, come watch me. I didn't play at all. Didn't get in the game. And at first it was okay because I was like, oh yeah, you know, they're older than me. They're seniors, they're this, this, and that. And then it started to be DMP after DMP. And then it'd be a game where we're winning by 20. And then I get thrown in with two minutes left. And then I get another DMP, another DMP. Okay, we're down 20. And um, he's going to throw me in for that, right? DMP, DMP. And then at a certain point, I'm like, I'm like, like what? Okay. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm just not going to play this year. I don't think I've ever told this part of the story. Right? So it's after a practice, after a practice. And our coach comes to me and he says to me, he goes, you know, um, I think I think it's going to be best for you to redshirt this year, you know, because I hadn't I was barely playing at all. I was only getting in 20, 20 minutes. He literally came to me after practice. This was after no, this was after a shoot around on a game day because we had a game that night. Came to me, he said, yeah, I don't think you should dress today. I think you should just, you know, what I'm saying I think we're going to redshirt you for this year. Right. And I, at the time, I'm like, like what? Like, I didn't come here. That wasn't part of the, what we talked about when I was like when you were recruiting me. Are you going to redshirt me now? Like I came in thinking I was at least going to get maybe like eight to 10 a game, eight to 10 minutes. So here's what I did. Same thing like with high school. Same thing like in high school, right? A little mad for a little bit. Then I'm like, okay, okay. That next week of practice, because I didn't play that game that night. I didn't play that game. I didn't dress or anything. Just sat on the bench, right? That next week of practice, when I tell you, that had to be, even to this point, I want to say that that was one of the best weeks of basketball I've ever played in my career in terms of practices, games, or anything. Because, of course, I wasn't playing in the games, but the practices that next week, when I tell you I was on something, it was a different, like, I was doing things I had never done before. Like, like you saw, like, in my first uh, college game where I said, like, I got my first bucket, things like that. That was a 20, 20 minute type of thing, 20, 20 minutes. You know, I scored at the end of the game. We were up 20, but you saw I drove from the perimeter. And I said I never did that before. That week of practice, after my coach told me I was going to get redshirted, I'm driving, I'm dunking everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. You know, I'm 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 hitting jumpers like not a lot of them, but I'm I'm whatever. I'm blocking everything. I was literally. I would have to say I was I was literally. I'll say this no. I felt like that week I was the best player in practice that entire week. I don't care who was on the roster. That week I felt like I was the best player in practice, right? This is how crazy it is when you really work, when you really have this mindset in practice. I did that for a week. A week I was getting off, killing everybody in practice. I'm, I don't know I don't know what it was, right? I was just like, all right, I'm not going to play this year. Okay, I'm coming out in practice. Those are my games. Literally, right after that week, all right, coach calls me again. Go talk to him. Uh, you know, we're, you know, we, we actually think we're going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to start to get in. So we're not going to, you don't, you can dress, you can dress tonight for this game. And after that, cause this was starting to lead into conference play. Now, all of a sudden, you know, granted when we played that, when we played at the time, it was what North Florida was a power in our, in the a sun, things like that. So, you know, of course I was getting in a little in those games, but in like just regular games, like when it's like a middle of the middle of the pack in the conference, things like that. I'm playing 17, 18. I'm playing, I'm playing big minutes or even in those bigger games, I'm playing like 10. I might not be playing 17 and up, but I'm playing at least 10. All of a sudden I'm starting to get minutes and I'm starting to score. I'm starting to get the ball. I'm starting to get touches, things like that. This is why I really tell you guys, you really got to fight through that adversity when a coach does not want to play you. The biggest thing I have to tell you guys is other than when you get in the game, be ready for your opportunity. You have to have been working that entire time. So when you get in that game, you're fluid. Like there's no, there's no drop off. There's no nothing, no turnovers. 
you can't make mistakes, especially if you're a freshman, if you're early on. You can't make mistakes, but when you're in practice, when your coach isn't playing you, you got to go into that practice saying, okay, you don't want to play you. You don't want to play me. I'm going to go at everybody in this gym. And so everyone in the gym is thinking the same thing. This kid needs to be on the floor. It doesn't matter if you're in high school, middle school, college, you could be in the league, things like that. You got to go into practice every single day saying, okay, if you don't want to play me, I'm going to work. Like I'm going to work every day in practice. I'm going to be in your face. The player you have in front of me, I'm going to dunk on him every single day. I'm going to block all of his shots, everything, until you and your coaching staff have to come to a decision. Okay, I think we think we think he needs to get on the court more. This is all I wanted to uh, convey to you guys. Like, as I said, I get a lot of comments, DMs, and I, I know especially now everyone wants to transfer. But if you would just stick with it and just keep working, I'm telling you, of course, you know, there's always the success stories when you transfer and it works out. But at the same time, if you would just stay and work, it not only improves your you know, your game on the court, just dealing with things going on, but also off the court as a person. It just shows that you can persevere through adversity, which not only translates, you know, to the court, but off the court and in life, like in general, if you can prove to yourself that, okay, I don't care what happens to me, I can fight through it and I will succeed. I'm telling you in the long run, in the game of life, not the game of basketball, in the game of life, you'll be successful. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Appreciate you guys watching. Remember, if you want the one-on-one -on -one ev evaluations or the subscriber breakdowns, Hit my website. Like I always say, appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time with the next video.